Good morning. How are you? What a wonderful day it is. Let me turn off this other one. Well, good then, morning. How are you? And what I a guess I'm turning it is. up. Oh, what modern technology. Well, happy after Christmas Day. How was your Christmas? I trust that it was awesome, amazing. A lot of people went to church on Christmas Eve. People spent time with their family. They were remembering that Jesus was is the reason for this season. And so I'm excited to be here with you today. I trust that this word will be a blessing unto you. There are those that are already on the line, and I thank you for coming on, Yolanda. God bless you for being with me. Um, let me know, how was your Christmas? Um, did you um, have any blessings that occurred in your life that was totally unexpected? I, I love to hear about it. And so that we can share it with others, put it in the um, comment section. Remember, we overcome by the blood of the lamb and the words of our testimony. And as I said, I'm happy to be here with you. I'm celebrating, still celebrating. People will be celebrating all week long, should be celebrating all year long. God is amazing. He is wonderful. So look, I want you to go get your Bible, your paper, and your pencil. I want you to take some notes. I have something to share with you that really, really blessed my spirit, blessed my heart. Let me know what I'm doing is not in vain. And anytime you do the work of the Lord, it is not in vain. Amen. Praise God. So um, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we just praise you and we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor. We thank you for the manifestation of your word. We give you praise. I thank you that the, my, the words that come out of my mouth are anointed and the ears of the listener are anointed. And Father, I give you praise and glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. I will be right back. again and I'm excited to be with you and I have Yolanda who has tapped in and said her Christmas was quiet um, with one of her daughters um, one with one of my daughters and and her two her I guess her two daughters um, Christmas is a time of gathering and coming together I know it's been difficult for many of us, many of us during this pandemic, but when you get an opportunity to spend time with your family, look, you need to shout it from the rooftop because last year, many of us didn't get that opportunity. And so I'm excited for you, Yolanda. Thank you for sharing that, that you had a quiet time with your daughter and her two children as well. Look, I hope you got your Bible, your paper and pencil. And I want to say this, if you didn't listen to the last segment um, that I did, you need to go back and listen to it. I personally think that it was very powerful, very anointed. And so it would be um, to your advantage to go back and listen to it and share it with others. And so I'm still talking about the promises of God and the promises of God for us are so very important. And um, we need to hold on to the promises of God. And so today I'm going to be talking to you about the voice of faith and faith is a promise and we need faith in this day and age. 
We need faith to go out and go to the grocery store. We need faith to go to to go shopping. We need faith to go to church. Um, I heard um, that there are some churches that are shutting down because of the variance. I'm not going to voice my opinion, whether I believe that's right or whether it's wrong, but acknowledge God in all of your ways and he will direct your path and learn how to be obedient to the spirit of God. Because in this season, we need to learn how to hear God for ourselves. Amen. And um, trust him. And when you trust in him, he will definitely hide you to help you. And so God is amazing. So we're going to be talking about the voice of faith. And I want you to write some of these nuggets down because I tell you, God is absolutely amazing. And so the voice of faith, and, and we're talking about the word of God and, and the word being words being containers and possessing everything that you need within them to accomplish your goal. And so when your heart is not filled with the word of God, faith is not present or the uh, force of faith is not present. When I was going over the notes and, and, I, and um, reviewing that and hearing that and chewing on it, the force of faith. How many of you know that faith is a force in the atmosphere? Your faith will pierce through the darkness because you're going to operate and you're going to flow on the promises of God. And so let me say that to you again. Look, if you can, make a comment um, in the comment section or, or, or put key things down that I'm saying to you to draw the attention of those that will be watching the replay of this or, or just going back and listen to it. And so when your heart is not filled, is not filled with the word, the force of faith is not present. So if your heart is filled with the word, it's just the opposite. Then that means the force of faith is present. And let me tell you, we need the force of faith. What a powerful, powerful statement. Amen. Our confession will only be mental and will soon fail. And so you got to hide this. There's a reason why the word says hide the word of God in your heart. Because if it's not hidden in your heart and it's just a mental thing, guess what? It's going to fade away. It's not going to stay there. So that word needs to be rooted and grounded in you so that you can allow the Holy Spirit to bring to your remembrance anything or bring out of your heart anything that you need in that self-same hour. But if it's just a mental thing, it will soon fail away. Yes, good morning. Someone else has come on the line. Hallelujah. Praise God. Thank you, Lord God. God is so good. I, I, I just love him. And so faith-filled words will dominate the law of death. Amen. It will dominate. It will dominate. My God, that word dominate, it, it means it will rule. It will take over. Faith, faith-filled words. Remember, words are just are containers, not just containers. They are containers, and they are filled with whatever it is that you need to accomplish your goal. And so faith-filled words dominate the law of death, and its force rules over Satan since the fall of Adam. Since the fall of Adam, guess what? <laughs> the faith-filled words will dominate over them. And Romans 8 and 2 says, write that down, Romans 8 and 2, the law of the spirit of life in Jesus has made us free from the law of sin and death. How many of you know when you are free, you are free indeed. Wherever the spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty, there is freedom. And there's nothing like being and operating and existing in freedom. Remember, fear will paralyze you. But when the spirit of the living God is present, you are free to go about. 
Now, I'm not saying be foolish because you must use wisdom and you definitely do not want to tempt the Lord thy God. And so that is so very important. Romans 8 and 2, the law of the spirit of life in Christ has made you free. It has made you free. And, and listen to this. You must refuse um, to bow your confession to the death of the law. That word, I had to look up that word, refuse. Refuse is a very powerful word. Sometimes it doesn't take a long dissertation. Um, sometimes it, it just takes one word, like that word, but. That word, but, is so very powerful. It, it is a powerful word, and it comes with force. And so you must refuse not to bow your confession like Meshach, Rashak, and Abednego when they were in the fiery furnace, and they refused to bow their will to the king. They refused to do what the king wanted them to do. And they said, no, we will serve our God. We will trust in him. And that's the way we have to be. We have to uh, not allow our confession to bow to the woes of the enemy. We must not allow our confessions to bow at whatever the enemy is trying to put on the canvas of our imagination. Now, God gave us the canvas of our imagination to create, to create, but we cannot bow. We just remember Meshach, Rashak, and Abednego. They said no. And guess because they stood on their promises, they stood on their trust, they stood on the word, guess what? They were not the only ones in the fiery furnace. When the king Nebuchadnezzar and them looked over into the fiery furnace, they saw a fourth one. Not three, but they saw a fourth one. And that fourth one was God in the fiery furnace with him. Now, sometimes I'll use interchangeably, you know, God and Jesus. We know the three are one, okay? And so um, he was in there with him. And guess what? Emmanuel, God with you. And he will never leave you nor forsake you. So just don't bow your confession. Have you ever thought about your confession bowing, like um, your knee bowing? You know, your confession cannot bow. It needs to stand on the word. Whatever the confession that comes out of your mouth, you need to stand upright. Woo, my God, stand upright and see the salvation of the Lord and watch and see the promises of God. Amen. And so you must refuse to bow your confession to death's law. The same as um, the men in Meshach, Rashak, and Abednego refused to bow their knee. You'll find that story in, in Daniel 3, 17, 25, and 27. So go and look at it and read it and look at your confession as a knee and not bowing it. Amen. Praise God. Exercising our authority in the world of the spirit. We've got to learn how to exercise, you know, build your faith muscles. We talked last week. I closed out on Friday talking about developing your faith. And so you develop your faith muscles by working it out, by using them, my God, by using your faith muscles and watching them develop. And as you do, you get stronger and stronger in the things of God. And we want to get stronger. You know, Arnold Schwarzenegger, I, I love to use him, or any bodybuilder, you know, or any person that God created, we all have the same muscles. And the only difference between one person and the next is the fact that they work it out. And so we have to learn how to work out our faith muscles. You say, well, how do I do that? Get a project. Begin to believe God for something and watch it manifest because you've taken a stand. You don't bow to the enemy. Look, I tell you, I went somewhere and, and the enemy was trying to get me to bow my knee, you know, on um, believing and trusting God that I had more than enough of what I needed 
for the assignment or what I was about to do. And I tell you, it was like a, a woodpecker, just peck, 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 it, peck, peck, peck. It. And guess what? He builds a nest in your mind. He builds a, a nest in your head and he just pecks there and he, he get, brings in these intrusive thoughts that you cannot accomplish what you need to accomplish. You don't have enough money for this. You're not gonna be able to go and you're gonna be embarrassed. I mean, just one thought right after the next. And that should let you know that it's not God. It's not the Holy Spirit that's pecking your head. When God says it, guess what? That settles it. It's done. It's complete. It's whole. And so I too, just as I'm telling you, you had to bring Satan in remembrance of the word and stand on the promises and say, Father, I thank you that you are a God of more than enough, that you are the all-sufficient one. And because I'm your son or your daughter, I have everything that I need to accomplish the goal. And guess what? When he sees that you mean business, he'll leave you. He will leave you alone. But guess what? He'll wait and he'll wait and he'll wait and he'll go your way. He'll go away. But he's going to come back to see if you really and truly believe what it was that you were saying. My God. And you have to let him know that you stood on the word that you had not forgotten. And your confession is, my God has already supplied every need that I have. Amen. And so bring him in remembrance of your word. And whatever anyone um, compromises on, will not come to pass. Now, that's a powerful statement. Whatever anyone who's believing and making confessions and you compromise on it, you draw back on it, guess what? First of all, God will have no pleasure in it. When you draw back on that which you're believing, if you draw back on your confession, guess what? You're compromising and it will not come to pass. The only way it's going to come to pass I mean, God, first of all, let me say this, God's sovereign will, he can do whatever he wants to do, amen? He can do whatever he wants to do, but you are, are, are being matured so that you can believe God for the greater things, the mega things, the abundance, and the only way that's going to, to take place and that you stand on the promise of God. So you don't want to compromise. You want to stand our life saying flat-footed, flat-footed on the promises of God, and don't move. Don't bow your knee, my God. Praise you, Jesus. And so whatever anyone compromised to keep, you will lose it. You don't want to lose anything that was promised to you. Uh, you bow your knee. You just don't want that to happen. Amen. And so we are under authority, and we have to exercise the authority that God has given to us. Amen. We have to remember, according to Hebrew 3 and 1, that Jesus is the high priest of our confession. And so when we are confessing the word of God, he is, he is hovering over it. He is watching us. He is protecting what it is that we are confessing. He is the high priest of our confession. He is the voice of our confession in the heaven. Isn't that awesome? This series is talking about the, the voice of faith. And he is the high priest of our confession. And he is watching over. He is protecting the words that are being confessed out of our mouth. He is the voice of our confession in the heavens. Psalm 108 and 20, the angels mm, excel in strength and do, and do his commandments and hearken to the voice of his word. He, the angels, hallelujah, hearken unto the voice of the Lord. Wow, when you think about that, he uses us, our voice, just like... Um, when you're praying in tongues, it's not a foreign voice, it's your voice that he uses to bring the, the spirit of God coming forth out of your belly. Guess what? It's your voice and he uses your voice, amen, to, and the angels 
and the angels hearken unto the voice of his word. So when you pray, you have to make sure that you are praying according to the word of God, that the word is the words that come out of your mouth, my God, I can't stress this enough. It's not your thought, not your opinion. I'm giving you straight word. And you need to rec be able to recognize the word of God, not taking the word of God out of contents, but you need to recognize the word of God and know that you know that you know that you know, amen, that the word says that the angels hearken unto the voice of his word. Not our opinion, but to the voice of the word. And so what words are you speaking? And see, when we decree and declare the word of God, we know that it, they will not return void, that they will accomplish what it is that you have, that has been sent out to do. And you remember, you must send out the word, the angels hearken unto the voice of his word, the voice of his word, the voice of his word. So you have that assurance that God, the Holy Spirit and Jesus, those three are one. And they're going to make sure that the voice of his word accomplishes everything that is being released. So when you pray, make sure that you pray my God, according to the word of God. If you don't know what, what that word is pertaining to your situation, whether it's finances, whether it's money, whether it's a business, you know, go in the scripture. Search. That's why I say study. Study to show yourself approved. Amen. Get in there, find out word that will apply to your situation, your business. Yes, they have they have um, messages in there about businesses. They have messages about families. There are messages in there about children and how to raise your children up. Amen. God is amazing. And his word is true. And so find that word. Begin to decree and declare that word because we know the angels will hearken. Let me read that again. Psalm 103 and 20. The angels excel in strength. Woo um, do his commandments and hearken to the voice of his word. Our confession is the voice of his word on earth. Don't you want to be a voice in the earth? Release in the atmosphere your voice print. My God. Woo, your voice print in the atmosphere and your voice, you know, we, if you confess the word, I confess that same word. It's the voice print that will identify you from someone else. You say, how does God get confused? You know, or does God get confused? If we're all speaking the word, same word and, and releasing it, how can it would be distinguished between one and another? Guess what? Your voice has a print. Just like your thumbs and your fingers have a print and there are no fingerprints that are the same. There are no two voice prints that are the same. And so he is able to identify. He knows when you are speaking. And plus, we know that he is a God that sees all. We know that he a God, he's a God that knows all. And he doesn't get confused. Confusion is of the enemy. But your voice has a voice print. And he can identify you between from anyone else. So you got to remember this. You must remember this, that your, our confession is the voice of his word in the earth. Do you want your voice to be heard in the earth? When you pray, pray according to the word. Amen. Pray according to your word, to the word. Because sometimes, you know, we may, um, we we may speak out of our own emotions. You know, some people pray songs and the songs don't even line up with the word of God. And so you're praying amiss. You're praying incorrectly. Make sure that you pray according to the word. He's giving you a pattern. Let me tell you, if you're a dressmaker and you're trying to make a dress, you have to make that dress. If you want it to look like you may not have know it or see it, but um, there used to be patterns in um, stores that sold materials and they had a picture of the dress that you wanted to make. And if you wanted the 
I'm dressed to look just like that picture. You have to follow the pattern that's inside of that envelope. You have to follow the pattern that's inside of the word of God in order for you to get the results according to the word of God. I'm going to say that again. You must follow the pattern that's inside of the book, the 66 books of the word of God in order for that, that um, the results to look like you want them to look. Amen. Remember, think about that pattern um, that you sell in. They still sell them because um, people still sew. You know, we have modern technology. We can go into the stores and we can shop. Amen. But people are still sewing today. And so if you go get a pattern, so you might need to go get a pattern just to hang up on the wall to be reminded of it or get a picture of a pattern. You know, you could probably look it up on Amazon, pattern of dresses. If you want a new wardrobe or, or anything, just to be reminded of the fact that if you want the results that the Bible will produce, you must, you must use the pattern, my God, that's inside of the 66 books of the Bible in order for you to get results. When they built the tabernacle in the wilderness, it was said that you had to build it after this pattern. And there was a pattern that was set forth in order to get the results that needed to come forth. Wow, this has really been good. And let me just repeat this to you, is that when your heart is not filled with the word of God, the force of faith is not present. My God, I need to smack myself. That was so good. Amen. You know, the force of faith. You know, we say the kingdom of heaven suffered violence and the violent taken by force. Well, what is the force? It is the fourth force of faith. When you decree and declare the word of God, it is the force of faith that will bring the manifestation of the word of God. Oh, my God. Father, we just thank you for this word. Father, I release, I come in agreement with those that are on the line with me this morning, those that have risen and gotten up early this morning, those that will come back and listen to the replay of this. Father, I set myself in agreement with them that the force of faith will operate in their life and may contain consistency in their life. And Father, that they will not let go of the word of God. They will hold on to the word of God. And Father, we just praise you and we thank you that whatever, remember, whatever is compromised will not come to pass and we will not compromise we will believe and we will trust in the word of God. We will not bow. <laughs> Don't bow your confession. Let your confession stand upright before the Lord. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid of your confession. People saying, look at her. You know, read Dr. Cho's book, one of the books to help change my life. I believe it's the the fourth dimension, fourth or fifth dimension, it helped change my life because he was believing God for certain things that didn't exist where he lived. Amen. But he did not bow his confession. Moses did not bow his confession. Abraham did not bow his confession. Noah did not bow his confession. Guess what? He built that ark. God told him to build it and it never rained before. He was talking about rain. People had no idea. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. People had no idea what he was talking about. But when God gives you a promise, when God brings to your remembrance a promise, when he highlights, oh, my, 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 thank you, Lord. When he highlights a promise to you in the word of God, you know, then don't bow. Don't bow your confession to that promise. Stand on that promise. That solid rock, it's unmovable in the things of God. So don't bow, don't bow, don't bow. You know how when you come in the presence of royalty, sometimes we, the women, they will curse and the men would bow. You know, but I'm telling you, do not bow your confession. Whatever God gives you, stand on it. Write it in your hand, confess it, 
but don't bow, don't bow, don't bow. Remember the three Hebrew boys, Meshach, Rashak, and Abednego, amen? And remember they were in the fiery furnace and that fourth one was this in there with them. And remember that God is with you no matter what. I want to thank all those who joined me this morning. This morning, okay, let me get my words right. I'm joining me this morning. I this morning, I trust that this word has been a blessing to you. I will be back tomorrow, the same time, the same place. Oh, and remember, get on the line and intercede and pray with us for the nation. We need prayer. I believe we have five more days of intercessory prayer. Whoo, what a mighty God we serve. My my boast is not in myself. My boast is in the Lord because without him, this would have not been possible. And so we did not bow. We did not bow. We stood in the midst of it all. I want to thank you once again for joining us in morning glory. May the peace and the love of God be with you. Don't bow your confession. Stand up on the word of God. Hallelujah. God bless.